dolphins. Relative to body size, the brains of bottlenose dolphins are among the largest in the animal kingdom. Scientists are still attempting to decode dolphins' complex vocalisations. The bottlenose dolphins at the Rutan Institute for Marine Science, a resort and research institution on an island off the coast of Honduras, are old pros at dolphin performance art. They've been trained to corkscrew through the air on command, skate backward across the surface of the water while standing upright on their tails, and wave their pectoral fins at the tourists who arrive several times a week on cruise ships. But the scientists at the institution are more interested in how the dolphins think than in what they can do. When given the hand signal to innovate, Hector and Han know how to dip below the surface and blow a bubble, or vault out of the water, or dive down to the ocean floor, or perform any of the dozen or so other manoeuvres in their repertoire, but not to repeat anything they've already done during that session. Incredibly, they usually understand that they're supposed to keep trying some new behaviour each session. Anne presses her palms together over her head, the signal to innovate, and then puts her fist together, the sign for tandem. With those two gestures, she has instructed the dolphins to show her a behaviour she hasn't seen during this session, and to do it in unison. Hector and Han disappear beneath the surface. With them is a comparative psychologist wearing a wetsuit and snorkel gear and carrying a large underwater video camera with hydrophones. He records several seconds of audible chirping between Hector and Han. Then his camera captures them both slowly rolling over in unison and flapping their tails three times simultaneously. Above the surface, Anne presses her thumbs and middle fingers together, telling the dolphins to keep up this cooperative innovation. And they do. The 400-pound animals sink down, exchange a few more high-pitched whistles, and then simultaneously blow bubbles together. Then they pirouette side by side. Then they tailwalk. After eight nearly perfectly synchronised sequences, the session ends. There are two possible explanations for this remarkable behaviour. Either one dolphin is mimicking the other so quickly and precisely that the apparent coordination is just an illusion, or it's not an illusion at all. When they whistle back and forth beneath the surface, they're literally discussing a plan. When a chimpanzee gazes at a piece of fruit, or a silverback gorilla beats his chest to warn off an approaching male, it's hard not to see a bit of ourselves in those behaviours, and even to imagine what the animals might be thinking. We are, after all, great apes like them, and their intelligence often feels like a diminished or at least a familiar version of our own. But dolphins are truly something different. They see with sonar, and do so with such phenomenal precision that they can tell from a hundred feet away whether an object is made of metal, plastic or wood. They can even eavesdrop on the echolocating clicks of other dolphins to figure out what they're looking at. Unlike primates, they don't breathe automatically, and they seem to sleep with only half their brains resting at a time. Their eyes operate independently of each other. They're a kind of alien intelligence sharing our planet. Dolphins are extraordinarily garrulous. Not only do they whistle and click, but they also emit loud broadband packets of sound called burst pulses to discipline their young and chase away sharks. Scientists listening to all these sounds have long wondered what, if anything, they might mean. Surely such a large-brained, highly social creature wouldn't waste all of that energy babbling beneath the waves unless the vocalisations contained some sort of meaningful content. And yet, despite a half-century of study, nobody can say for sure what the fundamental units of dolphin vocalisation are, or how those units are assembled. Scientists claim that if we could find a pattern connecting vocalisation to behaviour, it would be a major breakthrough. But the sophistication of dolphins that makes them so interesting also makes them really difficult to study. Virtually no evidence supports the existence of anything resembling a dolphin language, and some scientists express exasperation at the continued quixotic search. There is also no evidence that dolphins cannot time travel, cannot bend spoons with their minds, and cannot shoot lasers out of their blowholes, writes Justin Gregg, 
author of Are Dolphins Really Smart? The ever-present scientific caveat that there is much we do not know has allowed Dolphinese proponents to slip the idea of a dolphin language in through the back door. But where Greg sees half a century of failure, other prominent researchers see a preponderance of circumstantial evidence that leads them to believe that the problem simply hasn't yet been looked at in the right way, with the right set of tools. It's only within the past decade or so that high-frequency underwater audio recorders have been able to capture the full spectrum of dolphin sounds, and only during the past couple of years that new data mining algorithms have made possible a meaningful analysis of those recordings. Ultimately, dolphin vocalisation is either one of the greatest unsolved mysteries of science or one of its greatest blind alleys. Until our upstart genus surpassed them, Dolphins were probably the largest brained and presumably the most intelligent creatures on the planet. Pound for pound, relative to body size, their brains are still among the largest in the animal kingdom, much larger than those of chimpanzees. The last common ancestor of humans and chimps lived around six million years ago. By comparison, cetaceans, such as dolphins, split off from the rest of mammal lineage about 55 million years ago, and they and primates haven't shared an ancestor for 95 million years. This means that primates and cetaceans have been on two quite different evolutionary trajectories for a very long time, and the result is not only two different body types, but also two different kinds of brains. Primates, for example, have large frontal lobes, which are responsible for executive decision-making and planning. Dolphins don't have much in the way of frontal lobes, but they still have an impressive flair for solving problems and, apparently, a capacity to plan for the future. We primates process visual information in the back of our brains and language and auditory information in the temporal lobes, located on the brain's flanks. Dolphins process visual and auditory information in different parts of the neocortex, and the paths that information takes to get into and out of the cortex are markedly different. Dolphins also have an extremely well-developed and defined paralimbic system for processing emotions. One hypothesis is that it may be essential to the intimate social and emotional bonds that exist within dolphin communities. A dolphin alone is not really a dolphin. Being a dolphin means being embedded in a complex social network, even more so than with humans. When dolphins are in trouble, they display a degree of cohesiveness rarely seen in other animal groups. If one becomes sick and heads towards shallow water, the entire group will sometimes follow, which can lead to mass strandings. It's as if they have a singular focus on the stranded dolphin. The only way to break that concentration may be to give them something equally strong to pull them away. A mass stranding in Australia was averted only when humans intervened, capturing a juvenile of the group and taking her out to the open ocean. Her distress calls drew the group back to sea. Why did dolphins, of all the creatures roaming land and sea, acquire such large brains? To answer that question, we must look at the fossil record. About 34 million years ago, the ancestors of modern dolphins were large creatures with wolf-like teeth. Around that time, it's theorised a period of significant oceanic cooling shifted food supplies and created a new ecological niche, which offered dolphins opportunities and changed how they hunted. Their brains became larger and their terrifying teeth gave way to the smaller, peg-like teeth that dolphins have today. Changes to inner ear bones suggest that this period also marked the beginning of echolocation, as some dolphins likely changed from solitary hunters of large fish to collective hunters of schools of smaller fish. Dolphins became more communicative, more social and probably more intelligent. Scientists have identified three levels of alliances within their large open social networks. Males tend to form pairs and trios that aggressively court females and keep those females under close guard. Some of these pairs and trios are remarkably stable relationships that can last for decades. Males are also members of larger teams of 4 to 14, 
which scientists have dubbed second-order alliances. These teams come together to steal females from other groups and defend their own females against attacks, and they can remain intact for 16 years. Even larger third-order alliances have been observed to coalesce when there are big battles between second-order alliances. Two dolphins can be friends one day and foes the next, depending on which other dolphins are nearby. Primates tend to have a you're either with us or against us mentality when it comes to making distinctions within and between groups. But for dolphins, alliances seem to be situational and extremely complicated. The need to track all of those relationships may help explain why dolphins possess such large brains. Dolphins are among the most cosmopolitan animals on the planet. Like humans on land, dolphin species are seemingly everywhere in the sea and, like humans, they have proved ingenious at discovering feeding strategies that are particular to the environments they inhabit. In Shark Bay, some bottlenose dolphins detach sponges from the sea floor and place them on their beaks for protection while searching the sand for small, hidden fish. A kind of primitive tool use. In the shallow waters of Florida Bay, dolphins use their speed, which can exceed 20 miles an hour, to swim quick circles around schools of mullet fish, stirring up curtains of mud that force the fish to leap out of the water into the dolphins' waiting mouths. Dusky dolphins off the coast of Patagonia herd schools of anchovies into neat spheres and then take turns gulping them down. All of these behaviours have the mark of intelligence. But what is intelligence really? When pressed, we often have to admit that we're measuring how similar a species is to us. But the question is not how smart are dolphins, but how are dolphins smart? There are people who go on spiritual retreats to commune with dolphins, women who choose to give birth in the presence of dolphins, and centres that claim to use the powers of dolphin energy to treat the sick. And there are probably more weird ideas about dolphins swimming around in cyberspace than there are dolphins swimming in the sea. The first scientist to posit that these humans of the sea had a language was John Lilly, an iconoclastic neurophysiologist at the US National Institute of Mental Health who began studying dolphins in the 1950s. He reared dolphins as you would a child and began to educate them in an artificial language, a gestural language which they eventually responded to, word by word. He discovered that dolphins invent a distinct signature whistle to identify and call one another, a unique name for themselves which they keep for life a trait found in no other animal except humans. John Lilly managed to transform what was initially regarded as an odd, air-breathing fish into an animal whose intelligence is so sophisticated it might deserve the same constitutional rights as you and me.